I just want to welcome everybody. My name is Kirsten Wilson. I'm the State Coordinator of Digital Learning, and we are excited to bring to you today our second Deal Day Lunch and Learn. Today, we are going to be joined with Amanda Perry and Gerard Newsom that are going to share with you some tips and tricks on how to use video and photography with your phone. So I'm going to hand it over to them. And then at the end, I'm going to close out with a special announcement. So stay tuned and welcome. Hey, thank you so much, Kirsten. We are so excited that you're here today. If you will go ahead, we have put a link in the chat um, or you can go to joinpd.com if you wanna follow along. Um, it would be helpful if you want a copy of all of these slides that we are doing to go ahead and join because it will show you all, you, all the activity that you do um, during this session. And it will also give you a copy of all the handouts. So give everyone just a moment to go ahead and get started. We'll keep popping that link in the chat as well throughout the session. So if you want to join in, just go ahead and do that. And as I said, we're using Pear Deck. So if you're not familiar with Pear Deck, uh, hopefully it'll give you a little bit of information about how, how this can be utilized for PD and an engagement tool. But we're going to get started talking about the tips and tricks for taking better photos and videos using your cell phone. So what I did is I started out picking out the top six things um, that I knew that I would want to know that I didn't know a lot about. So the things that I felt like would be most valuable to you, uh, we're going to start out talking a little bit about photos and then we're going to lead into video. Um, uh, real quickly, um, our team, as you can see, we're covered across the state. So we added this so just so you know it, if you're uh, the different areas that we're representing and you can come back and see who is your representative for the different areas of the cooperatives throughout the state. Okay, so as we get started, let's go ahead and I want to see if you're joined into the, um, if you're joined into the Pear Deck, let us know what type of cell phone do you use typically or the most to take your phone pictures. If you are not joined into the Zoom and you wanna just pop that into the chat, feel free to do that as well, that will work. Uh, we just wanna know what the majority of people are using before we get started. Kind of let y'all see the responses. So it looks like the majority so far are iPhone. Okay, we got a few Android users which is great because Gerard is, is our Android pro here. And so that's, I think we strategically planned that. So I'm the iPhone user, he's the Android. So hopefully we can answer all the questions that you have about the different uh, things that we go through as you're looking at the, the tips and tricks. A lot of the things are very similar in both. And so it should, it should overlap. And I'm showing you some of the iPhone stuff. You'll have similar things in the Android as well. Next question, okay, just to get you started, let's see, rate your level of expertise using uh, your cell phone for photos and videos. So like you're a novice, you know a little bit maybe, or pretty proficient, or are you an expert? And if you're an expert, please feel free to speak up and, and give us tips along the way if you have something that you wanna share that we happen to miss or pop it into the chat. A few housekeeping things too. Uh, we have quite a large group that has signed up. So if you happen to have questions along the way, you can pop those in the chat. We have team members that will be monitoring that and uh, we can try to answer those and follow up at the very end. Okay, let's see how everyone's kind of feeling. Looks like we got some that, we got some novices and some proficients and no one's an expert yet. So hopefully we're gonna get to help you move that mark and, and get everyone feeling a little bit more proficient at the end of this session today and um, go start, we're gonna start out the five or the six tips that I'm gonna share with you. The first thing, framing, camera settings, some of the best things to look at when you're, when you're taking your photos, the best lighting that's available, and then um, digital zoom, whether or not to use that capturing image burst and not time photos. So there's some new settings in your phones and some uh, new features that we're gonna cover and kind of tell you about to, to make sure that you're aware of that hopefully will make this just a little bit easier as we're taking pictures and get the best pictures that you can. The first thing that we're gonna start out talking about, number one, framing your pictures. So it's very important that you set up the composition in a way that, that draws viewers in. One of the tips that you can do this with is by using a system called, and some of you may have heard of this, it's the rule of thirds. If you saw on that previous slide, I had the, some grid lines on that. Um, basically the rule of thirds is you break up your composition into three sections landscape, three sections horizontal, three sections vertically, 
And the goal is to align the most, um, the most interesting parts of the composition along those grid lines. And so an example of what that looks like, as you can see, you've got the people walking here, kind of just uh, gives you, and I highlighted in green so that you can see what that looks like. But the most interesting parts when you're, when you're popping up your composition, try to align those on those grid lines. And that's the rule of thirds. So that so is something that will kind of come naturally to you once you know about it. But if you're not comfortable with that and you need a little bit of help, you actually can turn this on in your phone settings if you go to your camera settings. And it's a feature called the grid and you can turn it on. And as you're taking photos, it will show you that little, uh, some white lines that show the grids that will let you see how you can best set up that composition. If you want to use, use the rule of thirds. Also, when you crop your images, it gives you this grid so that you can crop it um, in that way as well. Just kind of an easy way to, to help guide you. Now that's not always true. So if you're taking pictures of landscapes and lots of things, you may want to use that rule of thirds. But let's say that you've got an image that's something that's, uh, maybe it's mirrored on both sides or it's very symmetrical on both sides. It's okay to take symmetrical images. Uh, it's just the way that you frame it up. You still may want to align that horizon where it kind of falls on that, on that, um, grid line of the, the rule of thirds, but you can put it, take it directly on. So the rule of thirds is good to, to consider, but also think about the composition and my, what might work best. Amanda, Another thing. Amanda, I'm sorry to interrupt real quick, but somebody asked the question about uh, how do you get the grid? Absolutely. Thank you. So um, whenever you get, whenever you're in your iPhone, you can click on your settings, go to your Camera settings, just go down to in your, in, and whenever you click on that camera, it will give you the option if you scroll down and it's called grid. Now that will mean that it's automatically gonna pop up if you turn it to where, it, to where it's green, it will pop up as you're taking pictures, you'll see those lines every time in your viewfinder. Great question. Um, also, um, the other way that you see it is if you go in and you're editing your photos, when you crop it, you'll see that naturally pops up. It just does it by default. But you have to turn it on if you want that to show um, in your actual viewfinder when you're looking at your camera to take pictures, you can just turn that feature on. It's defaulted to be turned off. Okay, um, another thing to consider. I, I talked about rule of thirds and, and that, that um, is very helpful. But another thing to think about is the angle of perspective. So sometimes it's not always just the way that the, when you're looking at it straight on, you may want to uh, get down at the ground level and shoot kind of up. One of the pictures that I, that I have here, I had some power lines in the background and I really liked the way that this lamppost looked, but I didn't have a good angle and nowhere could I take it that, it that I feel like it was a good composition. So I just kind of tilted and made sure and I framed that picture of that mansion in the background along with it to bring it into the composition, but I blurred it out. I made sure that the, that the lamppost was the focal point. We're gonna talk about those features here in just a moment. But so think about the angles and perspectives um, as you're taking pictures and you might try some different things that you, that you don't think might look okay, but just it gives you a different way of looking at it to try to capture the best composition. Okay, the second thing we're gonna take a look at and that is the camera setting. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is the auto mode and the manual mode. So a really cool feature that we have in these digital cell phones, I don't know if you knew this or not, but when you've got your camera up and you're going to take a picture and you let's say that there's something you really wanna focus in on, all you have to do is tap on your screen. And when you tap on that screen, you're gonna see this yellow box pop up and that's going to be the focal point for that image. So depending on what you want to focus on, you can, you can either click that and, and focus it in to manually focus it, or it's just gonna auto shoot in auto mode if you don't focus it in. And that's gonna give you a more crisp image of everything in the background. I'll show you what that means or an example of what that looks like in just a moment. So on this picture here, this is one that I just took and I put it in auto mode, just took a quick shot. But one of the, and you can notice in the background, the lighthouse is very clear. It's crisp and it's clear in the, in the background. But I didn't really want that to be the focal point of this image. And so what I did on the next one is I tapped on the berries. I thought that was really cool, the way the water was dripping, the colors. And so I manually focused in on that. And what you can see it does is it takes that, um, the berries, it put them as the focal image, and then it blurred out the background so that you have more of a focal point. So you just do that by taking your finger and tapping it on the different areas that you want to focus in on. 
Sometimes you do this with light, we'll talk about that too, but you can click on different areas if it's too bright or too dark and, and have it zoom in and that will adjust the lighting too. So it works with focus, works with some of that lighting as well. Portrait mode versus photo mode. This is another setting that is really cool. I didn't realize until recently, but and it may be just a brand new feature, I'm not quite sure. But when you take pictures in the portrait mode setting, you'll notice that it kind of blurs out that background, right? It gives you a more focal point, just like I was talking about a moment ago when we manually focused it in. If you set it on portrait mode, it's gonna blur that background and take the, uh, the object that's closest and make that the focal point. As you can see on the left hand or the right hand side, that's an example of what it looks like in just in photo mode. So one of the cool things about this, if you take the pictures in your portrait mode, you can actually go back and adjust how blurred you want that background. You do that by clicking on your image and you're going to go in and edit it. And you'll notice if you look on the, the images on your left hand side there at the top, if you click on that portrait where it's yellow, it will pop up and you can see all it will let you turn that on and off. So if you have it and it's on yellow, it gives it's in portrait mode. And when it's in portrait mode, you can click on that little F stop. I don't know if you can see that very well, but at the top, um, next to where it says portrait, there's a little F 2.8 up there. And so that's where you can click and it will let you drag on the image on the right. If you look down at the bottom, there's a little section that says depth and it has like an F 8.0. It gives you like a little slider bar at the bottom of your, of your cell phone where you can drag that F stop and stop the blur. I had a um, my husband had taken a lot of pictures of, of fish with his friend and he was really upset his friend was because his fish were all blurred out. And so we realized that you could go back in and adjust that blur just by making by adjusting that f-stop. So that's kind of your shutter speed, how long it's open, how long that picture's taking. And that's gonna give you that, that blur for the, uh, the amount that you want. Okay, another mode in the portrait mode. And yes, these are my precious fur babies, but I did try to use some natural light in this picture. I wanted to kind of show you the different settings whenever you take the portrait mode and you want to go back and adjust it. If you click on the little square, I don't know if you can see it, it looks like a little square with a circle in the middle of it right under the picture on the, of the dogs. It will pop up and give you different options for lighting. And so that will let you take it to contour light, studio light, Maybe you want stage light and it's gonna be more focused or it, turn it to black and white. So just check through those different settings to see what looks best. And just know that you have those different modes available when you're shooting in the portrait mode. Okay, the next thing we're gonna talk about was adjusting exposure. And I talked a little bit about that by, you can click your finger um, just like you can to focus. If something's too bright or too dark, sometimes that will help adjust that light. Another way to do it is if you click and you've got like that focal point, if you can see right beside that little square there, there looks like a little sunbeam. Do y'all see the sunbeam? Okay, so the little sunbeam there, when that pops up, that's gonna tell you that you can adjust the exposure. So I can take my finger on that little sunlight and I can drag it either up or down or left or right. And it's gonna give me either a lighter or darker background based on however much we, we, we adjust the exposure. I'll show you an example. This is when I had adjusted it brighter. And then this is an example of when I had taken that exposure down. So you have the ability to do that while you're shooting the pictures. Um, so if you're out and, and something's too bright, just know you can click on that. And if you get that little sunlight, you can then take your finger and drag and drop it. You also can edit that in the, in the settings whenever you go back in after you've taken your photos to adjust it. But sometimes it's easier if you wanna get that perfect shot right then just to do it while you're taking those shots and don't have to go back and worry about the editing piece of it. Okay, the third tip that I wanna talk about is the best lighting. And so probably most of you are aware of this, it may not always be the best opportun the, the, the opportunity that you have, but if you can shoot with natural light or take photos outdoors, um, that's going to be your best bet. It's just going to give you the most crisp, clear um, color that you can that you can get. Um, and then we will we will talk in a moment about how can you shoot some stuff at night or how can I shoot some of that stuff indoors. Um, but if you can be at all try to pull in natural light or be outdoors, that's going to be your best bet. So, got a quick question for you. I'm curious, what do you guys think is the best time of day to take photos? Sunrise, sunset, noon to 12, or I'm sorry, noon to 2 p.m., 
or after dark. And you, and the way you can answer this is if you just take that little icon, if you're using, if you're connected to the Pear Deck, just drag your finger to the, to the right answer. And I'll show you guys kind of what it looks like as people are popping in their responses. Looks like a lot of you are saying sunrise, sunset. Some of you are saying noon, noon to 2 p.m. No one said after dark, crazy. It's like that was a free, free option for us. That's okay because that's not the right answer. <laughs> so, the right answer is sunrise, sunset. The reason for that, it's kind of called the golden hour, okay? So it's the golden hour. If you can do it about an hour before sun, or uh, an hour after sunrise, an hour before sunset, that's when you're gonna get the best um, lighting as far as the sh there's not gonna be as many shadows. Um, during noon to 2 p.m., believe it or not, it's one of the hardest times. 2 p.m. gets a little bit better, but noon, is the harder and is the brightest time of the day. And so that's when you're gonna get lots of hard shadows cast on people's faces. And so you kind of wanna stick away from that if you can, try to do it either early morning or late in the afternoon to get the best results. Okay, one more question, curious about this, and this I might have, should have reversed those, um, but what's the best type of day to take a picture, sunny or cloudy? What do you guys think? Let's see what everyone's thinking. Oh, okay. All right. Looks like the majority is saying cloudy and overcast. And that is correct. Uh, the reason for that, it's not to say that you can't take pictures on a sunny day. Just be cautious because you're going to get those hard shadows that um, depending on how bright the sun is and where you're standing, um, you can sometimes manipulate that just by adjusting your location. Like I said, taking different angles and perspectives of the shots. But the best, uh, the best type of day I've had, um, I've done a lot of photo shoots and outside of that was really the cloudy days. And people usually feel like that's the worst time that you could do it, but it's actually the best because it keeps those shadows from showing on people and it just gives better color whenever in, in the photos. Okay, so as I said, best, time, best thing to do, um, the best lighting is natural or outdoors. I have some colleagues that have some amazing pumpkins and so they love them when I walked into the store when I was in New Hampshire and I was like I've got to take pictures of this but as soon as I took the shot it was totally dark couldn't hardly see anything so that picture on the left but in just a moment someone opened the front door believe it or not and just by letting in that natural light gave me enough to be able to take the picture on the right so it really makes a big difference if you're in the classroom or you're somewhere inside a building maybe it's just getting uh, letting that uh opening up a door or opening up a window to let some of that natural light in. Digital Zoom, okay, this is not your friend, not now. It may be someday, because I'm not gonna say the technology won't be there, but right now it's not. The reason for this is, as you go in and you zoom in on your cameras, um, it will pixelate things and it's gonna reduce the quality of the image and it's gonna give you pixelation the more you zoom in not going to be near as clear. So um, some of you guys, if you had, I think we had a lot of iPhone users on here. Um, I, and I just realized I have the iPhone 11 and I can actually uh, take my zoom or take my, yeah, take my zoom and scoot it out. It's actually defaulted at the one times zoom in, but you can actually scoot it back and make it at the 0.5, which is going to give you a more wider image range and, and also make the image a little bit more clear. So I just wanted to show you and how you do that when you are taking your picture, all you do is if you click right above and y'all can see probably that little, that little dial that's out here over there, as I took my picture, I just took my finger and, po and placed it there and it allowed me to zoom in and zoom out. And so I can just take my finger and drag it along and it's gonna give me those options. So this is an example of what it looks like at the 0.5 and I did have to drag it out to make sure that I got that wide image because it actually, like I said, defaults to the one times. And then uh, this is an example of what it looks like at that one times. Okay, capturing image burst. Um, this is whenever you take a series of a lot of shots. This is gonna be really good if you've got, um, if you've got a, like action or something that's happening and you don't know that you can catch it all at once. So what you do is you go to take your picture and you hold your finger down on that shutter button, that, that white button that it gives you to, to click 
If you hold your finger and drag it to the left or drag it down, it's gonna start taking a series of shots and that's gonna be your burst. If you drag it up, it's gonna start recording video. So that's just some things to think about, but if you need a lot of images, I would highly recommend, so let me show you what that gives you an example of. This is what it looks like in my phone. It took a series of 17 photos. I can go back and pick out the best shot, the one where they're jumping midair and not the one where they're in the water, but I took it all within just a few seconds just by holding that button down and dragging it. Okay, nighttime photos. This is something, did you know that you can take photos in the dark? There is a new feature that is, is on a lot of phones now and that is the nighttime mode. And so what it'll let you do is it lets you open up that shutter and take, uh, take that picture for like one to three seconds or 0.5 to three seconds. That means that that picture is actually taking, the image is being taken during that whole time while that's open. That also means you have to stabilize your, your, your phone. No matter what you do, you cannot hold it still enough to reduce that blur. What I did in the photos I'm gonna show you is I actually just took it and, when, and you'll see whenever this pops up when it's dark at night, if you can see this little three over here, it has like a moon on the top of my, of my device over here on the left hand side where it has a three seconds over there, that's gonna pop up and that tells me that it was taking that picture, for, it's gonna take that picture for three seconds. I placed this on a table, clicked the shutter button, just held it steady um, and it, it let me, uh, it captured this image completely in the dark. The next image is, was actually completely pitch black. And what I did is I set it on the bench, took it for three seconds, let that shutter take that, be open for that time. So you just click the button and it will take it for that amount of time. And then it will give you the clearest shot that it can do based on those settings. All right, and I'm gonna hand it over to you, Gerard, now to start with video. Appreciate it, great. Listen, all the things that she talked about as far as, uh, some of your settings, nighttime, a lot of those things also go for the video as well. So these are the things we're going to cover, basics, exposure, resolution, reserve settings, and file format. Now keep your phones out. I am going to give a little love to uh, the Android as well, uh, but keep those phones out and we're going to do a little interaction, give you some things to do as we go through this as well. So the first thing we want to talk about is cleaning your lens. Now, if you want, you can click on that and it will maybe you know, give you a little uh, bit of a video, but you wanna clean that lens because cleaning that lens, again, you have some really high powered uh, cameras out there, devices, and sometimes it, it will pick up some of those little pieces. So you wanna make sure you clean, clear that lens. It could be a wet nap, it can be uh, some paper or, or tissue, if you will, or like this guy here, just use your breath and you know, a little bit of your sleeve or something like that. We want to make sure that lens is clean, okay? That's the first thing, because I know it's a small thing, but we got to make sure we go through that. Now, the next thing we want to talk about is your exposure. Now, exposure controls the amount of light. I think um, Amanda covered some of this as well. But here in the exposure, uh, you want to be able to adjust that right away, okay? When you bring it out for your camera, uh, and want to shoot video, you want to make sure your lighting is good. And the lighting sometimes varies on the power of your camera. You have iPhone here, you have Android. So if you click on the iPhone uh, icon right there, uh, it will actually take you and, and show you how that uh, adjustment can be made. So if you click on that, what you will see is uh, the screen will come up and you touch the actual subject or the actual object that you want to really focus on. And what it will do again, like she said before, it will pop a little screen and you will take that screen, you pull it down or pull it up. Okay. And it'll give you the uh, amount of light that you could bring in for that specific picture. Again, just depends on what day you're shooting, right? You know, sunny day or cloudy day or uh, afternoon, or I'm sorry, morning or sunrise. And so that gives you that ability. Same thing on the Android. It has the very same thing. Uh, you know, it's a little different. Of course, it has a circle or what have you. Uh, and by the way, when you click on these, they should open up a different tab. So you can actually use this after we're through, okay? But that just shows you how uh, it's oriented and how you can use that. The next piece we're gonna show is resolution. The resolution is always, again, talking about the frames per second, how many frames per second you want inside of that, um, how many frames you want inside that second. So at the top right, if you have your phone out, you'll see at the top right, it says HD 30, right? 
And you can switch between those two by touching it. So if you touch it, it goes to HD60, HD30 back and forth. But you say, you know what? That's high def, but I want to go to something bigger. All right. So to adjust that, you go into your settings. And once you go into your settings, of course, you find your, your camera. And once you find your camera, you'll see right at the top toward it says record video. And that's where you are able to make that adjustment. You see it went between the 30 and 60. That's the family it was in. But if you switch it to the 4K, that's the family it'll switch uh, between when you go back to your camera. So if you go back to your camera, you'll start to see it at the top right. Now it's changed to 4K, 30 and 60. So again, tapping that gives you the amount of resolution you'll be able to see. So just allowing you to do something very simple and very quick. Uh, making those adjustments. A lot of times these things are defaulted for you. In other words, they are automatically set, but sometimes automatically set is just not good enough. So what we're gonna talk about next is reserving the settings, right? Because we always wanna have and keep what, we, what we're you know, using. Here's what we're doing here. Whenever you bring up your camera, it always goes directly to video, right? So boom, goes the photo. But you may be in a mode to where I don't wanna, bring it up and go to video every time. So what you want to do is go into your settings, uh, find the camera again, of course, and you want to be able to use, it says preserve settings right there in the middle. And you want to go to camera mode and you touch camera mode. And what that does, it says, okay, whatever I used last in my camera, that's what it's going to come up to be. That way you don't have to switch back and forth. Or every time you come up, it goes to a photo, you have to switch it back to video. So here, if you use video, and you touch it there and record it for a couple of seconds. You can close it out because again, you made the setting, but if you go back into your camera, boom, it comes right back up to video. So that way, if you know you're gonna be doing video all day, you don't have to go back and forth. It does the same thing on slow motion, photo. Again, whatever you use last, that's what you're going to come back up to when you use that um, camera or that device again. So I wanted to show you that because that's always a convenience. And I can't leave out um, the Android because the Android has those settings as well. Uh, you will be able to do the same thing, go to camera settings and all of that. Uh, you go to the camera settings, go to uh, camera settings there again, same thing. And it also has, if you scroll down, settings to keep, that's worded differently. Again, the same thing, camera mode. That way you can decide if you want to always go back to the one you've always used, okay? Um, the last thing I really want to just talk about real quick is file format. You got MP4 and you have MOV. MP4, most of your cameras create those files using H.264 codec, okay? This combination always uh, is useful for all devices, especially when you're taking it to editing software. The MOV, .MOV some iPhone phone cameras uh, use this in the H.265 codec. Um, these files are smaller um, and take up less storage, but they're not widely supported. And sometimes you may have a little trouble with that when you're using your iPhone. So the thing you want to do, go to the next here, the next screen will show you how to get, or if you have some trouble, how to get to that next um, setting to set it up. So you find your camera, go to formats to set it up. And what you want to find, uh, once you look at this in formats, you want to go to most compatible. That way you don't have to worry about the format. It will always use it that way, okay? So just want to give you a few things there, uh, some really cool stuff. Again, the more space you use, or in, rather the larger or more defined space you use to record, the more space is going to take up on your phone. So you may want to be careful about that. So that's the end of that. We want to take up any questions that we may have from here today or share some of your takeaways from today. What is your top takeaway? Yeah, let's see. And we can open up now for questions. If you guys have any questions, we're happy to answer this. And if you if you had something that, that resonated with you, please pop it in. Let us know what you, your top takeaway is. The next question that we're going to ask is we want to know what kind of topics you want. Is there something that we could cover? Uh, we're trying to do these very briefly, but just some things that we feel like would help. Um, so across the across the board with anybody can benefit from. So please let us know um, what you gain from, from today. We'll give you all just another moment or two and then we're going to turn it um, to the next slide. 
and let us know what you would like to see us pr uh, provide for you guys next. We've got one coming up December the 16th, I believe, and that's going to be on social media. So that's our next one coming up. And feel free just to unmike if you have a question. Un unmute, unmike, un unmute <laughs> is what I meant. <laughs> All right, and there's the details on our next session. Again, yeah, if you were joined in on this, on this Pear Deck, deck um, once I shut this off and we close out this session, you will have a copy of these handouts. Um, if you knew somebody that wasn't able to attend, please let them know that we will be re we are, have recorded this and we will be posting that and sending a link out for that before too long, uh, within the next week or so. And so be looking for that. Um, just we thank you for joining us today. Really appreciate your um, your input and Kirsten I'll hand yeah, it back to you. I just wanted you guys to know that today we are joining you remotely from JT Robinson with the Pulaski County Special School District. We want to say special thanks to Pulaski County Special School District and Joe T. Robinson and a special shout out to Miss Ireland who's part of the Driven Virtual Academy. We're using one of her classrooms today and out to Rachel who has helped us too um, and just uh, really uh, was awesome to be able to be in the school as we delivered today our lunch and learn deal day to you guys. Um, if you would like for us to join you remotely when we do a deal day, please let us know. We'd love to come out and join you that way. So if you did hear bells in the, in the background, we were on site doing some other things today. If you haven't had a chance to follow our social media, please look for us on Facebook and Twitter. We would love for you to follow us there. We'll be sharing this link of Rubik recording there um, as well. And we also share a lot of other tips and tricks. And sometimes we have some fun things. One thing before we sign off today, we want to do a special shout out to Christian Haynes, our admin assistant, who just recently welcomed his baby Ezra into the world. And we're so excited to have a new member of the DLU. So shout out to Christian and Krista and their new member Ezra. And so we wanted to shout that out in such a special way. And we would love to be able to come out to you guys. So um, please reach out to us. Thank you again, Gerard and Amanda for bringing your expertise and giving us a balanced approach for those of us that um, love the Android world. Um, Gerard, I'll forgive you later. Um, but we really hope that you guys got something from this. Um, I know I did. And just let us know what other things we can help you with. Um, in regards to the digital world. So thank you so much. We'll see you on the third Thursday, December 16th, where we'll be bringing you some tips and tricks about social media.